So, do you know anything about the test? Uh, did you see the video or anything? Or? I did back in the was All right. So, we've just put two little pilocarbon discs on yeah. your forearm and they just give a trick your brain is thinking you need to sweat. Yeah. Just collect that then. So, are you a heavy sweater? Uh, I lose about two to three kg. Okay. So, it's heavy, I guess. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Cramps at all? or? Uh, I was when my ferritin was low. Okay. Uh, my quads and calves would cramp up, and uh, last two weeks they haven't, so I guess. Four hundreds. Perfect. You are salty. Uh, yeah. Very salty. Yeah. Mm. I can taste the salt in my mouth yeah. when I uh, run. So, the average person be forty nine millimoles per liter. Mm. That's salty. Yeah. You are. So yeah, you're very salty compared to the average person. Yeah. So seventy seven. Yeah. Pop that in. So when I pop it in. It'll come back as an email, I'll go through it with you, but you'll also get a copy of it, so don't worry about trying to remember everything. Yeah. It's surprising you don't cramp more, actually. Yeah. Um, at that salt loss levels. And probably, does, does that mean I've got too much salt in my diet, or? No, no, just the way mm. you're, you're made up. And it would probably become more apparent when you, if you went to do triathlon, because you're using different muscle, muscle sets between swimming, biking, and running, that you would probably cramp even more yeah. if you weren't on top of it. And the longer, the, like if you did a half Ironman, yeah. it would really be apparent, like, if yeah. you were going for that. Maybe yeah. so if you're 10K, 5K, you're training, you probably just, you probably get away with the soya sauce, to be honest, with the sodium yeah. in, your, in your system. But the longer you go on without putting it in, just yeah. the, the performance will just drop off, so. Let's take a second now, we'll have the results. Okay. So this is the oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So this is the scale that we use. Okay. Yeah. So the average person here loses nine forty nine milligrams of sodium per liter of sweat. Okay. Yeah. Um, majority of people I test would be in this bracket here. Yeah. With the sporadic ones would be up in the hair now and again. But you are the saltiest person I've takes it, tested for quite a while now. So you're a very salty sweater. So I'm high. Very high, yeah. So for every liter of sweat that you lose, you're losing 16, 1,617 milligrams of sodium. So as you're a heavy sweater, it's like a double blow. So you're losing a lot of fluid and you're in that fluid, you're losing a lot of salt. Yeah. So you need to stay on top of the fluid replacement and the sodium replacement. Mm. 
some people it's just more sodium than fluid but as you're a heavy sweater it would be a combination of making sure you get both back in okay if you don't the longer the event the more problems will occur yeah i did a last year in france i did a 15k trail race which was a lot of hills okay and i was bollocks yeah yeah that's what would happen yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what that and it was hot <laughs> yeah yes, i put it down to the heat but yeah. everything went from me yeah, after 10k and it's i was probably, gone probably the sodium loss because you yeah. didn't replace it so we look at the sweat concentration yeah. and your sweat rate the duration of your events and the intensity which would be pretty high intensity um so it's pretty simple for you as i said the night before the race yeah um we would recommend everyone to preload with the 1500 that's a high strength electrolyte what that does it uh, preloads your blood plasma with sodium so you go into the race fully loaded so to speak you'd have it again at breakfast if it was an early morning race if it was in the afternoon you wouldn't do it the night before it all depends on the, what time the race is during the day and then during the event okay so if you're doing if you're doing it it's not really going to be relevant but if you're doing a half marathon or more mm. we would go with a combination of this or salt how, tablets. how do i get that in me when i'm running salt tablets oh salt tablets yes okay, okay. um so if you're doing your trail run if you're doing yeah. a half marathon if you're doing a full marathon and um, you would be advised to take either or yeah not both so obviously in a race i can't take them because no. i'm not gonna get it so in a race i'd stick two of those in my pocket yes you can cut off a strip and that's a training yes so you'd have you'd be taking like if it's a 10k you won't be taking these at all because you would just be using the preload and then afterwards for recovery okay if it was a half marathon or a full marathon you'd be taking at least two to three per hour of these two. it's the equivalent to this oh, two two is one of those is it yeah okay, okay. but again it's down to what because you do so many different events it depends on what <laughs> race you're doing yeah. if it's like the 15k trail run they would help a lot yeah okay if it's a 10k race you're finishing half an hour not relevant mm -hmm. okay uh, if you're doing a triathlon or swim bike and run you'd be taking these but i'm off to cambodia and okay. it's 40 degrees at the moment yes would it be good to take two of those before the race yeah or this before the race it's the same thing same this thing this will have the fluids obviously you'll be drinking that so the dose for that is one tablet in 500 mils of water yeah it's a small bottle yeah um you obviously don't carry a bottle at this pace you're going at no so yeah beforehand and then afterwards they're really good for recovery okay okay so if you had what time is the race at 5 30 in the morning 5 30 okay so night before yeah again with your breakfast whatever you'd have at race day mm -hmm. and then afterwards for recovery okay okay um that would do you perfectly yeah Again, as I said, it's down to the, because you do so many different, some people come into they just do Iron Marathons or they just do, <laughs> yeah. you do so many different things, so you just have to work, yeah, work around what's yeah. best for you. But you lose a lot of salt, uh, a lot, compared to the average person that we would test. Yeah. So um, the longer the event, the more issues you're going to have uh, if you're not putting it back in. Yeah. So yeah. it's... Um, yeah, I realise I, I underperform in some races. Yeah. It's like... There's no reason I should be running so shit yeah. in some races, so that's probably why. Yeah, especially yeah, yeah. in warm conditions, like, it's mm. even going to become more apparent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, so that, that that's key for you is to get this. So, because if you go back to the average person or myself, it's not as important because I don't lose that much salt, but you lose a lot of salt. Yeah. Now, especially if you go, if you move into do the same duathlon, you probably find because you're using those different muscles on the bike and then you get up and run the cramping will become even more apparent like you could end up yeah. walking because you haven't preloaded 